This episode is brought to you by the Law Office of Carlos A. Garcia. Serious cases require a serious lawyer. Board certified in criminal law. <laughs> Dude, I love this stuff, bro. That's classic shit, bro. They were known as the San Antonio Conjunto, which was also Los Aguilares, Los Paisanos. They were, you know, that San Antonio style. Yeah, the Los Aguilares, I love that stuff. We played too, with them bro. so many times. It was always Paisanos, Los Aguilares at dances. Always the same thing. Wow. Yeah. Man. ¿Y Los Aguilares no eran de la area tuya? ¿De they were eran? south side. They were south, south side. side. They were south side. And we, but my dad moved me from the south side to the north side. So sí. we, we moved up. La que me gusta de Los Aguilares es este. Los Aguilares. Anhelos, vato. Esa es la bruta, bro. Let me check that one out right here, bro. I mean, we're going to play a little music también. Oh, hombre. This song takes me back. Oh, though. yes. This is probably one of the most popular songs they ever recorded. I believe that one, and is that Vanilla? And then, and then they have Dos. So they have, dos they have a them. song called Jesusita, and I was like, the last time I heard it, I was like, okay, that's kind of inappropriate, <laughs> you know? But back in the day... That's you know, how it was, he, yeah. Yeah, and then he could be singing it from a, a young teenager's perspective point of, point of as well, because they talk about the girl 15 years mm -hmm. old, and... She's, she's, you know, I mean, I don't even want to go there, but, <laughs> but it's like, it's kind of like, uh, you know, I think uh, it, does, it wouldn't fly nowadays. No. But no. back in the day, I guess it was, uh, you know. A lot know. of things were different back in the day. I yeah, mean, a lot man. of things were different. How old are you, bro? I am 45. 45? So you were born in uh, 1975, 74, 6? 77. 77? Mm -hmm. Oh, what don't you got the bro, todavía? Yeah, but the thing is, I started, you know, my career at 11 with my dad. 1987? 86? Then from there, being a roadie, and I got my first job with Joy Records. Because my dad recorded for Joey Records. ¿Qué le pasó Joey, bro? Canelo's still there, the old man. Yeah, but the young guy, his son was running his the show was for running, a while during think, the 90s. I don't know what he's doing now. I don't. But the old man, Canelo's still there. See, ¿Sí? He's still there. Yes. Joey Records, uh, tell me a little bit about Joey Records, man. Joey was where I can say I learned everything from Canelo. He was a man that taught me mm -hmm. a lot about the business, mastering, uh, just being in the record business was where I wanted to be because mm -hmm. I saw him. I saw the record side was just so much more funner than being on live shows, I thought, because you get to make the business decisions. You get to do market everything, you know, at uh -huh. that point. But at that point, again, we were dealing with what? CD sales, cassette sales. Uh -huh. We were dealing with Walmarts, Targets. Yeah. Everyone's buying it. Hard product. Hard product. You know, he was making his own stuff at his plant. He had We had the plant at Joy Records. And how old were you? Yeah. 17, 16, 17. From 1990. Mm -hmm. That's right when Tejano was about to start. It was because when I was there, Michael was already recording. And then Joey, mm -hmm, and then Joey put me with Michael. Yeah. Well, it's funny you say that because me and Jaime were talking, Deonda, and he asked me, what happened to Tejano Radio? And my opinion was corporate America left. Mm -hmm. When corporate America left, you know, there's no money. There's no commercials. <clears throat> there's, there's no nothing no more. Yeah. And... After Joey, I got hired by a gentleman by the name of Sam Riddle. And Sam Riddle took me under his wing. He did. Well, so so you were with Joey. I was and, a Joey. And, and why did you get out of Joey? More, Sam you offered know, me a lot more money. Okay. And then who, who was Sam Riddle what, with? Sam Riddle is the founder, producer of, remember a show back in the early 90s called Star Search? Yeah. Ed McMahon. Was it? Yeah, Ed McMahon, Dick Clark. That was him. Sam Riddle was a producer of that. Oh, okay. And he, you know, Rebecca Valadez came out on there. Yeah. She he, ended up singing with Maz. Yes, yes. And Joe Lopez, backup well, singer. He found this guy named Adrian, and he, he had a, a band started called Adriana Destino. Mm, I think I remember them. Yeah, okay. He, Sam, said, hey, I want you to run them. I want you to be the guy to put them. Okay, I'll see what I could do, you know. I told Joey, hey... I got to go. You know, I got to follow the money mm -hmm. at that point. And Joey and I had some great times. Michael and I, you know, there's a story I want to tell you about Michael. I, I guess I'll tell you that first. Okay. The story of Michael before yeah. I go to California. Yeah. That's good there's two stories. One. Michael Salgado. Michael Salgado. One, because we still have coffee. We still talk. Because I, I was asking you before I just did the story about there was right. some contractual. Well, that, that, had to, that had to deal with Cruz de Madera. Uh -huh. That was a whole Cruz de Madera thing. But we still did albums. And the thing about Michael was there was one day. And he, we laugh about this still. We were in Mexico, and we were talking to a promoter, just him and I, just Michael, 
myself and the promoter. Uh -huh. The promoter says, hey, well, let's go look at the arena where, you, where you're going to go play at. And this is this is when I think the album uh, had Palomita Blanca on it, which is De Venezuela, he says, came out. So it was Palomita great. Palomita Blanca yes. de Piquito de Oro. Hit hard. Good song, bro. Yeah, hit hard. So we're in Mexico talking to the promoter, right? Mm -hmm. The promoter says, hey, let's go check out the arena. Okay. Monterrey, okay. Uh, I think it was. Yeah. First of all, his car, the promoter's car was like a 1988 Chevy Caprice. So me and Mike are like, Okay, let's get in. So we got in. You were expecting something fancy, yeah, and, you, know, you know, something new the yeah. año. So we get in, driving, no AC, windows rolled down. Okay, all right, strike two. Okay, fine. Next thing you know, the car starts sputtering. I'm like, oh, no. It runs out of gas, or it just dies. Uh huh. So we're like, oh man, it's gonna go on. So. The promoter says, I'm going to call somebody. Okay. Next thing you know, we have the federal police behind us, a cop car behind us. The promoter comes and goes, I'll take care of it. We're like, okay, whatever. Cool. Promoter comes back and says, hey, how much cash do y'all have? Ying, uh -oh. What? How much cash do y'all have? I don't know. Here, take it. Okay. Can y'all do me another favor? Do you talk to me and Michael? I'm like, yeah, what? I'm going to drive, but can y'all push the car till we get to that service station? So me and Mike are pushing the car. <laughs> We're pushing the car to the service station while he's driving. No cell phones back then. Nothing. No. Nothing. A yeah. videotape go live. Yes. Viral. <laughs> we, <laughs> <laughs> and we still laugh about this to this day because it was just funny. And, you know, what happened, I don't know if we ever got the gig or that. I don't know if we ever got the gig. But that was one story where we out to gas in Mexico and we had to push the car. The other one is when... Uh, in Beeville, Texas, his brother Ernie couldn't make the gig. I don't know what happened. Uh -huh. Couldn't make the gig. So we're like, what do we do? And we're playing at the Grand, which is in Beeville, Texas. We're like, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? I don't know. The owner of the Grand comes and says, hey, I have a cousin that plays Bajo. Who's your cousin? Juan P. Moreno. Call him. Uh -huh. See what he could do. Rock, that was the most expensive day that Michael had to pay a bottle player. Damn. Because Juan said, I'll do it, but he wanted this certain amount of money. Yeah. How hey, much? Oh God, it was it was over five. 5,000? No, 500. Oh, 500? No, but no, nah, uh, Back then it was. I it was, mean. Yeah, 92, 94. You know, that's just how it was, but Juan did it. No practice. Sí, no aguanta ir hacia el bro. He did it. No practice, which is okay, cool. Se va a tocar en el sueño, carnal. Yeah. Dormido. Yeah, well, just, you know, <laughs> hey, awesome. You did it. If you've been injured in a serious accident or you've been arrested on some serious charges, you need an attorney that's going to fight for you. Carlos A. Garcia. Obviously, if you're approached by a federal agency as it relates to an investigation, be it health care fraud, drug conspiracies, money laundering, bank fraud, any other federal crime, you want to remain silent. You want to talk to a lawyer who can give you real, honest advice. Give them a call right away. 956-584-1448. Because serious cases require a serious lawyer. I'm Carlos A. Garcia, a criminal defense attorney in the Rio Grande Valley. I've been practicing criminal law for over 15 years. I'm board certified in criminal law, and I can help you with every problem you may have. Board certified in criminal law, attorney Carlos A. Garcia. 